The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. Hi, I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, and I am so delighted to introduce our guest today, Scott Reed, who's the President and CEO of the incredible Music Academy of the West with an exceptional leader in Scott Reed. Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, so good to see you, Susan. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. So glad to be able to talk about you and talk about the Music Academy of the West today. But let's start with your childhood, where you grew up, and some background. We'd love to know. Sure. So um, I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, just some background, and I'll, I'll focus on some background that kind of led me to where Great. I am today. Uh, you know, I'm a huge advocate for community outreach. Uh, we're trying to incorporate that at the Music Academy, and it's because I'm really a direct product of, of that. Uh, when I was in fourth grade at, you know, a pretty middle-income elementary school in Tucson, a uh, singer from the Arizona Opera came and produced an opera at our school. It was one woman that came and worked with all of us. I was very fortunate to be in the production, and that one experience with her really set my path for, for being in the performing arts. Uh, she came back the next year. By the end of two years, I was singing in different languages. She was giving us private lessons, and it made me realize, you know, looking back, what one person could do in uh, guiding and inspiring many, many, many kids uh, that then transitions into a really wonderful uh, adult life too. Incredible. Music in school, but experiences as a child and really experiencing music and it really opened your eyes to what you wanted to be. Right, yeah. and then adding the generosity mm -hmm. of a volunteer. Yeah. You know, somebody coming in and taking the time to share a gift with kids. Mm -hmm. And it made a big difference for me and, and I hope what we do makes a di big difference for the kids we uh, engage with. And it absolutely does. And we'll be able to talk a little bit more about that specifically in some of our schools here in Santa Barbara County. But you mentioned growing up in Tucson yep. and going to school there. Yep. And I know you somehow landed in the Santa Barbara area. And I think it was for school. Yes. Actually, I know it was for yeah, school. Yeah. Um, but tell us about your school choice and your major. Sure. So I um, came to Santa Barbara. So I, being a kid in Tucson, one thing that all kids in Arizona do is swim. And mm -hmm. so I was a swimmer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I uh, was uh, invited to swim on the UCSB swim team. Uh, at the same time, I was fascinated by the ocean. I think, you know, being a kid in Arizona, you are fascinated by the ocean sometimes. And so I uh, uh, knew about the UCSB's marine biology program. Mm -hmm. And so I originally had uh, the idea of being a marine biology major. Well, I got to school and uh, um, I decided, you know, College is a real gift, and uh, and so I uh, decided to really follow a passion. I had mentioned to you, I was always involved with the performing arts right. when I was in school. I got involved, I did some non-major music programs uh, that first year, and I loved it so much. I was so passionate about it that I quickly uh, changed majors and became a music major. And wow. so uh, starting from my sophomore year on, I was I was a music major and uh, you know it was a really great experience for me at UCSB in the music department. That's incredible. Didn't know that you started off marine biology. I, yeah, yeah, not many people know that because yeah, it lasted really for about two months. <laughs> <laughs> you you uh, followed a different passion though. That's right. You really did. And I just want to ask a minute about your swimming because yeah. that is such a, uh, you're such an athlete and it swimming, you have to have such discipline. But I'm curious, when did you start swimming? So I started swimming when I was five years old, mm. you know, and swimming's a really interesting sport that, again, you, you know, you look as an adult and, and where you've landed professionally and personally and, you know, looking back at the things that maybe uh, led you to that place, swimming is definitely one of them. Right. You know, swimming is a, such a, a, such a cool sport because, you know, your head is in the water, uh, you're not able to talk to people. And so what you're doing is you're mentally coaching yourself mm -hmm. the entire time. Every lap, you're, you're pushing yourself, you're talking to yourself, and that has, has 
definitely uh, uh, translated into the way that I work mm -hmm. uh, and trying to be ambitious, trying to drive myself towards goals, having a really good work ethic. And so, you know, that sport acumen mm -hmm. um, really has come into play in a lot of important ways in my life. Fascinating, really helped with the mindset of that persistence and growth and determination and goal setting, it sounds like. Well, even at the Music Academy, um, uh, you know, we, we work with a very high level young musician that comes to the Music Academy to train with us during the summer. And there's so many correlations between a high level athlete and a high level musician. Yes. Just as far as the work ethic, the discipline, the commitment to practice, uh, the um, performance anxiety. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of those things play mm -hmm. in part. So we actually have introduced a wellness program that gives uh, cardio activities, yoga activities uh, to our instrumentalists mm -hmm. because uh, you know, they have to essentially be Olympic athletes on stage with, sounds, their, with their instruments. Sounds really innovative. But yeah. I really appreciate the bridge between the athletes and your uh, musicians. It's really incredible. Yeah, it's that. something, again, taking taking the things that have been important in, in my life, mm -hmm. in my background, and just making sure that you're honoring them, incorporating them, and being inspired by them in your daily life. Now. Absolutely. So going back to the UCSB days, yeah. I said earlier, I think I know where you went to school. And then I said, I know I know where you, you went to know school. I know because I when school. I went to school at UCSB, that's where we got to know each other actually in a different environment. We were both working in a retail environment. Yeah. And we got to know each other then. So it's really fun to just come back circle and loop back around to where we are now. Scott. Well, yeah, we were just talking about yes. you know, Santa Barbara is such a small, yes. wonderful community. You, you come here, if you're here for any duration of time, you quickly develop relationships that are lifelong yes. and it is amazing that we knew each other in college we yeah. knew each other in the retail world and you know to see what you were doing oh, and the way that you're nice. contributing to this community Thank you. and uh, I feel so you know honored and and fortunate to be getting to do what I do at, in in Santa yes. Barbara and the fact that we get to work together and uh, and and try to take our talents and our dedication and, and make something uh, uh, work after this long history we've had together, it's really exciting. It is really exciting. Thank you for that. And while you were at UCSB, you really discovered or got to know better the Music Academy of the West. I mean, there's a direct correlation between when you were a student and the Music Academy, uh, Academy of the West because you, you went there. You literally went to the doorstep and said, here I am and I'm here to support the work of the, the Music Academy. Is that how it worked? Yeah. It's, what happened? It's, it's kind of a Cinderella story. Okay. But, you know, one thing sometimes you don't hear in a Cinderella story is the amount of time it takes <laughs> and the work it takes to get to that destination uh -huh. point. So uh, when I was a senior out at UCSB, uh, you know, I, even though I was a music major, again, I was a, ma a music major because I was passionate mm -hmm. about music. And uh, I didn't really have aspirations to be a professional musician. Mm -hmm. My my kind of professional ambitions have already always been around business. You you mentioned retail. You know, I worked full time in right. school at a retail store, and I loved it. You know, that that business side was very important to me, and that customer service side. Um, and so I started thinking my senior year, as I think many students do when they're facing the realities of not being in school, what were my passions? How could I put them together? And I thought, you know, business and music. And I had known about the Music Academy. I didn't know a lot about it, but I had known the quality of the Music Academy. And I thought, you know, I was in a situation that I didn't have to work full time my senior year. And I said, I'll do an internship. And so uh, I kind of envisioned doing something at the Music Academy of the West. They didn't have any internships open. That wasn't something that they did. So I did. I literally went knocking on their door mm -hmm. and offered my services. Uh, they interviewed me uh, um, about three times before saying yes. And so for my senior year, I worked 15 hours a week. I would, uh, you know, drive in and spend uh, my time at the academy doing absolutely anything they asked me to do and just right. trying to do it the best I could. Well, and look where it led you. A few years yeah. later. A few years later. So trace for us just briefly the path that from there away, I think you went to Northern California, and then you're back as president and CEO. Yeah, what are so, some of those dots? Yeah, so some of the dots are, um, after that internship, I was mm -hmm. hired for a summer position. Then I was hired for um, a, a year-round position. Something interesting happened mm -hmm. uh, um, that year-round position. I 
uh, had met um, a number of our important investors at the Academy very early on in my career. And, uh, you know, being a young person, I had a lot of people that believed in me very quickly, which, uh, you know, again, I worked hard to make that happen, but still, you know, the, the gift of people believing in you is, is, uh, can be so prominent in your life. And uh, the Luria um, family, Eli and Lee Luria, were a couple that I met. I actually took minutes mm. for a scholarship committee that Lee Luria was the chair for. And uh, when uh, the summer was over with, that very first year I was involved at the Academy, they funded a full-time position for me at the Music wow. Academy. They really believed in what I had to offer mm -hmm. professionally. And so uh, then that turned into about three or four more positions. After five years, I uh, left, went to San Francisco, worked at the San Francisco Opera in their fundraising department, and then was recruited back to the Academy to be the vice president of what we call institutional advancement. Mm -hmm. So being responsible for raising the funds at the Academy mm -hmm. to uh, offset our operating costs and build new buildings. Uh, I did that for about uh, six years and then I uh, went through the president search and was appointed president in uh, just right, right, right around 2011. 2011. Yeah. Aren't we lucky? Well, Aren't we fortunate to have you at the helm of the Music Academy, which is a gem, truly, and you do so much with the community and for the community. And I really want to go right into that and, be, and to talk about what you're doing and for and with the community. Let's talk a little bit about simply the mission yeah. of the Music Academy. What really is the, the mission, purpose, goals? Well, our mission's twofold, mm -hmm. and, and both of those, those areas you know, really depend on one another. Mm -hmm. The first is to train the next generation of great classically trained musicians. Mm -hmm. And so bringing the world's best young musicians to our program to train uh, is a very, very important part of our mission. The second part is to cultivate a adventurous and discerning audience. Mm -hmm. And I, I love those words that we use in that because it really removes all boundaries mm -hmm. in the way that we engage audiences at the Music Academy of the West. They work together because a sustainable career in music can't happen unless you have a sustainable plan on how you engage audiences. Right. And so the two of those are uh, really the core of, of why the Music Academy exists. Mm -hmm. And so starting in 2011, and now you hear, we're here in 2018, soon to be 2019. And Scott, you've done incredible things for and with the community, like I said. I know it's you and a team, yes. but the, really the Music Academy has done so much. And so to ask a question, I won't ask this question, but if I could ask the question of what are all the hallmark and wonderful things and landmark events, please list them. That'd be, we wouldn't have enough time. So I'd love to ask you, in recent history or in your thinking around the last few years, what are some of the really big events or productions or qualities mm -hmm. or things that have come about through the Music Academy of the West through that lens of the mission? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad you started with the team yes. aspect yes. because uh, I'm the fortunate helm of the Music Academy, mm -hmm. but there is such a uh, incredible team behind uh, uh, behind everything that we accomplish. Our administration is extraordinary. Our board of directors is extraordinary. Our community of investors, not to mention our fellows, faculty, you know, all of Absolutely. those things. Uh, the core of the Music Academy program has been uh, a, a summer school and festival. And so uh, talented com musicians come and they, they train with us during the summer. So uh, having a, a really impressive faculty roster mm -hmm. is so very important. So that's always gonna be one of my highlights is the work we do with our faculty. They come from all over the world, major orchestras, major conservatories, major opera houses mm -hmm. to come and work with our fellows and engage with our communities during and, the summer. And Scott, about how many faculty members are, and fellows are being served approximately? in the summer? So every year we bring in 140 okay. fellows. Okay. We have 2,000 worldwide applicants for those 140 spots. So the wow. Music Academy is is one of, if not the most competitive uh, training program mm. in the world for classical musicians right here in Santa Barbara. It's something yeah. we should all be really proud of. Absolutely. And then faculty members, we're bringing in uh, around 50 faculty mm -hmm. members that are working with them Thank you. during the yeah. summer and then performing also for our, our, our community. Right. So faculty, that's yes. always got to be a highlight mm -hmm. because of uh, the roster that we
we bring in and uh, engaging them in such a special way in our community. Um, the second thing that, that's been a big uh, move for us is um, our orchestral partnerships. Um, we've had such a strong vocal institute previously under the leadership of, of Marilyn Horn. Marilyn's our honorary director now, and that mm -hmm. program just continues to be a defining vocal institute in our industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we wanted to also uh, uh, create some wonderful partnerships in our orchestra program. Mm -hmm. So uh, we started with a four-year partnership with the New York Philharmonic, mm -hmm. which brought the New York Philharmonic to Santa Barbara to do you know, really uh, wonderful community concerts for, uh, uh, for the community of Santa Barbara, work with our fellows, and then it also gave an opportunity for our musicians that came during the summer mm -hmm. to go and spend a week in New York and train and work with the New York Philharmonic. So, uh, and this is just a select number through audition of our mm -hmm. fellows that got the opportunity to do that. When we launched this, we were the first training program uh, it was its, the first training program of its kind in the United States wow. where a student would get to go to the home of a major orchestra and essentially become a member of that orchestra for a week. So talk about really practical tools on how yes. to build your career. Wow. Uh, so our partnership with the New York Philharmonic uh, ended. Um, uh, just at the beginning of this year, 2018, and we were very pleased to launch a new international partnership with the London Symphony Orchestra. And so taking the model that was so successful for us with the New York Philharmonic, we have uh, evolved it, I mm -hmm. guess you can say, with the London Symphony Orchestra. We're just getting ready to go for our first exchange with the London Symphony in about three weeks where our fellows will be there. And again, this summer, 2019, the entire London Symphony Orchestra will be in Santa Barbara for six days to perform for our community, to work with our our fellows, Michael Tilson Thomas, their conductor laureate, will be uh, here conducting. So orchestra partnerships wow. been a big move for us. And then uh, I'll say onto that that mission statement about audiences. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we have introduced a really comprehensive community access uh, program that is around um, changing our ticket pricing. We're offering a lot of our tickets at $10 now. Mm -hmm. Kids are free to all of our events. And then each summer we are doing one major community concert, whether it be at the Bowl, we've done it at the La Playa Stadium mm -hmm. before, where we do all the tickets uh, for $10 for, you know, four to 7,000 uh, people. And it's changed the accessibility of the academy. Yes. It has made it open to everybody. And mm -hmm. so um, our goal is to continue working on, on community access. And uh, as you said, you know, it is a treasure. It needs to be a treasure that is available and enjoyed by everybody in the community. Oh, that's great. Scott, as you were talking, it's just, I want to keep interjecting. Wow, I can't <laughs> believe it. This is incredible. It really is. It really is. And I know you selected three uh, avenues to, to talk about, but you, again, could have spoken about a hundred things that the music Academy has contributed to in, to in terms of our community. It really is a treasure. And you talked, you said a word that I that sparked my interest. The word is evolve. Yep. And I really believe that since your tenure, 2011 till now, there's been so many different um, lanes you've you've walked through together with the with the commitment of the Music Academy and really evolved and grown. Mm -hmm. And one very special area that I know that you're moving right into has to do with serving youth. It's in our community, elementary students students in our schools, I'd really love for you to talk about this new evolution. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think evolution's a really important word. Yeah. When you're educating new audiences, when you are training musicians, you have to be relevant. You have right. to be something, as we've said, that's accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, the Music Academy is making a big move in, in our operating model that we are making a commitment to be to to 12 month opportunities mm -hmm. uh, um, throughout the year. So moving away from what we've been previously known as is a summer school and festival mm -hmm. uh, into a year round dynamic organization that is providing opportunities to our community, to uh, uh, um, our uh, nation, to uh, international uh, causes, and one of them starting in the community. Uh, we have been inspired by the London Symphony Orchestra. They have an incredible program uh, called the Sing Program. Mm -hmm. We've used it as a model to launch our own Sing Program here in, uh, in Santa Barbara. Uh, as you know, we've had the uh, great opportunity to team up with the Santa Barbara County Education Office, mm -hmm. with you, with Ellen Barger, uh, with a number of wonderful local uh, teachers. Yes. And last month, we launched 
Santa Barbara's first ever SING program, which is a community-wide children's choral program that is uh, working with after-school programs and providing the incredible uh, experience of choral music mm -hmm. to uh, children in our community free of cost and under great leadership. Wow. That is incredible. And what has been the reaction from some of the students, the perhaps the teachers, and really the parents too, of the SING program? Yeah, I th it's it's been great. Mm -hmm. you, we're on a learning curve. Yeah. This is, uh, uh, you know, when you when you launch a new business, you've got to just make sure you're really present and aware, and you're listening. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, at first we had we had uh, planned for this being six uh, sixty kids at the three schools that we're representing: mm -hmm. Adams, Franklin, and uh, um, Canalino, and Canalino, yes. and Carpinteria. Right. And um, quickly we had to expand that to seventy because yeah. of of uh, the demand. Mm -hmm. um, we have kids from other schools coming to the after school programs at these three schools. So I would say the reception has been excellent. Mm -hmm. um, and the parents, we had a, a wonderful welcome event at the Music Academy. We opened our doors and the parents and the kids came and uh, we were just delighted uh, that there was such engagement mm -hmm. from that launch uh, standpoint. There was such commitment already from the parents and the kids. Absolutely. Which tells me uh, not only is there um, uh, a want and desire for a program like this, there's a real need mm -hmm. for this program and there's incredible capacity Absolutely. for this program. And I know that uh, with uh, continuing to do the work we're doing with the Santa Barbara County Education Office, uh, with the ambition we have at the Academy and the commitment to outreach, I think that uh, we have a really special program that is uh, going to continue to blossom. I think it is definitely special. And thank you so much for, again, an example of contributions to the community. It's free, students are engaged, the parents are, it's filling a need that just wasn't there before. Um, I want to say too, as you were speaking about the mission and your audience and engaging the audience, um, there at that launch event where the families were in in yes, the rooms and outside yeah. in the courtyards at the Music Academy and just talk about a different audience, yes. children and families and babies and, you know, just all there engaged in, in music and uh, a choral experience. It was really incredible. Yeah, it was, re it, it, it was, um, Inspiring. Yeah, it really was. It was inspiring to launch a program mm -hmm. and to be able to see growth in future already. Absolutely. You know, I think yeah. that that's, that's a really promising business I, I agree. ahead of us. I agree. Well, Scott, you just said inspiring, and that reminds me of you. You are just really are an inspiring leader. And let's talk a little bit about your leadership, because I think the audience and viewers today can really learn from different examples of leaders in our community, and you're definitely a shining example. And over the years, you've really had to develop um, learn and develop and hone some leadership skills. Mm -hmm. So for you in your life and where you are now, what are some of the leadership skills that you really have uh, consciously developed and honed? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that, uh, you know, adaptability mm -hmm. is a really important uh, leadership skill. So uh, not leading, as I like to say, with ego or arrogance, mm -hmm. bringing people into your administration team, bringing people into uh, your different networks that can advise you and, and guide you and uh, be think partners. And, uh, and then also there's so many changes. Right. There's so many changes in our industry and the world and making sure that uh, you know, you're not just trying to drive a template that maybe was successful five years ago but, but isn't relevant now. We've got a, a saying at the Academy, resist template. Mm. You know, look at something in a new way. Uh, reimagine what it can be. Uh, pay attention to what's going on around you. So that that adaptability is is really important. I think another thing in leadership that um, I use as a guiding force is people. Invest in people. Invest in leaders. People are the things. It's not projects. It's not words on paper. It's people that bring things to life. And so uh, uh, trusting the people that you work with. Uh, giving uh, them tools mm -hmm. to be successful. You know, we treat our department managers as business owners. They're owning those businesses that they're running and we all benefit from their success and there's a real return on investment when, uh, when we get to see our mission at play in a bigger way in our community and beyond. Thank you for sharing that. It, uh, splitting open the curtain, behind the curtain a little bit to see what about your leadership skills. But I do want to say to you, Scott, that something that I've noticed now and since I've known you is that part of who you are is just you have such a warmth, but you have such a fire as well, you know, a fire, you're bold, you're a very strong leader, but you're, you know, just 
you just seem to have um, this charismatic way of being this leader with a lot of energy. And that energy has been maintained and grown and evolved all these years. How do you maintain that? How do you keep that <laughs> fire really bright? Um, you know, I think um, I, I talk to, to, to young people, mm -hmm. uh, maybe in high school that are saying, looking at colleges and looking at career paths and mm -hmm. things like that. And being absolutely resistant to uh, not doing something you don't love mm. is so important. If you can develop your career in something that you're passionate about, then you're not segmenting your life. It's not your professional life and your home life and your personal life. It's life. Mm -hmm. And it is a gratifying 360 experience. And, uh, you know, I think that everybody's worked in, in environments or for companies uh, that maybe hasn't been a good fit for them. Right. That's really tough. Mm -hmm. And if you can be resistant to that and just keep on working towards working for a place and being involved with people that inspire you yeah. and feed your passion, then um, there's, you, you can't be anything but energetic. You know, it, it, life is a great thing. The other thing that has uh, kind of revived my energy even more is I'm uh, the father of a 22 month old oh my who goodness. is uh, also, as you say, fiery and energetic. And so uh, that keeps me very much on my toes too. <laughs> and probably gives you some balance as well and some perspective different well, than you've had before. And just going back to your, your uh, other question uh -huh. around um, leadership, mm -hmm. Being a parent has been an amazing uh, um, opportunity for, for me to learn new leadership skills uh, around patience and <laughs> guiding and building consensus and right. all kinds of good things. So, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for, for sharing a, bit, a lot about your leadership and, and that fire and that passion. Really, it sounds like it has to do with passion and love for what you do. You're really believing in what you do. It just mm -hmm. continues to, to feed that energy for you and for others who are watching today. Yeah, I think For that's sure. something we have in common. Which, oh, that's nice. Yes. Yeah, why yes. we always have such engaging conversations. That is true. We really do. Scott, I can't believe we're actually rounding out the interview time that we have today. Can't believe it. But I wanted to ask you about um, one last question about um, perhaps a mentor in your life. And I know that you and your position obviously mentor others. But knowing who you are and being reflective and passionate about what you do, I know that there were probably many people who've mm -hmm. mentored you. But is there any one in particular that really strikes you as, yes, this is a person who really did, um, did something for me and mentored me and taught me something? Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, mentorship is so important yes. uh, in anybody's life, at any, in any time in anybody's life, whether you're young or you're older. Uh, so it's something that's very important to me. I've had a lot of terrific mentors in my life, you know, family members. I mentioned this incredible woman uh, that came to my elementary school yes. when I was in fourth grade that, that uh, was an incredible mentor. Um, but uh, kind of focusing on one, I go back to that, that story I said mm -hmm. of when I was an intern at the academy and, and somebody that stepped up and said very early on, I believe in you mm -hmm. and I want to help make something happen for you. Uh, and that's Lee Luria. Um, I had mentioned Lee and Eli Luria, mm -hmm. and um, Lee um, has um, been such an important person in my life uh, because she invested in me early on. When I left and worked for the San Francisco Opera, she would come and visit and tell me what was going on at the Music Academy. And um, I have to say, the, uh, one of the, the favorite calls I have ever made in my life um, and probably will be, uh, um, was when I got to call Lee Lurie and tell her I'd become president of the Music Academy. Wow. You know, after that early investment that she had made in me 14 yeah. years earlier. Yeah. And so uh, uh, it, it, it goes to say to adults, mm -hmm. um, uh, you never know what mentorship will uh, turn out to be. And I don't think uh, you'll ever know how much somebody may appreci appreciate you in the future. So we should all make that a commitment that we are offering mentorship and making ourselves available and investing mm -hmm. in people, in young people, and people that we think have opportunity to grow. Scott Reed, thank you so much for not only joining us today, but the contributions you make as a leader in our community. You do so much, truly. You invited me once to a master class at yeah. the Music Academy of the West. So I want to say thank you for this master class on leadership and contributions to the community. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. 
I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Local Leaders.